And one more little fun thing. Here's the live transcript. There we go. Again, welcome everybody. My name is Linda Wiley. I'm a doctoral student at Baker University and also an associate at the National Center for Media Literacy. And I'll be moderating this session today on game implication in Canvas LMS. Wow, what a group we have, almost 60 folks. This is gonna be a popular session, I can see that. Very exciting. Uh, at the end of the session, uh, Brianna and team will be posting their materials in our Discord channel. I'll be posting that as a reminder uh, in chat throughout throughout this time that we're together. We're about 90 minute session today. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to our team. Very excited that uh, I got to, to sit and talk with them just a little bit before the session. You guys are in for a real treat today. So Brianna, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you for joining. I'm uh, in Santa Barbara, California. Um, since I see everybody's from all over the place, well, thank you for joining. Glad it's virtual and you can make it. Um, so yeah, we're here to talk about gamification of an online course. Um, happy to have you here and hope that you enjoy learning a bit about our first experiences gamifying a course. I think kind of one of the first things I want to mention is this is the first time we've kind of done this. Well, maybe the second time we kind of did a few other things in a separate course, but this is where we really jumped in and tried to gamify this course. And um, we're just happy to share our experiences with you. So let's jump in. So yeah, I'm Brianna Van Buskirk. I'm an instructional designer with CSU Online um, with the learning production team with CSU Online Extended Campus. And um, joining me um, is Laura Malinin and Sarah Batting. And I'll let you guys introduce yourselves too. Hi, everyone. Yes, I'm Laura Malinin. I'm an associate professor of interior architecture and design, and I'm also director of the Nancy Richardson Design Center, which is an interdisciplinary center where we teach um, an undergraduate certificate, an undergraduate minor in design thinking, and a graduate certificate in design thinking. Sarah? Yeah, my name is Sarah Batting. I uh, work very closely with Laura. I oversee the operations and academic programming for the Richardson Design Center. And one of my primary responsibilities is to help develop the certificates and minors and the programs and then decide how and what we're going to teach what we teach. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so um, gamification, it can seem like a cumbersome road to travel down um, a lot of people think of video games or designing some kind of complicated interactive game, but luckily this presentation should help resolve some of those uncertainties and leave you with a clearer path to success and hopefully just a bit of creative inspiration. So throughout the presentation, we will take a look at a gamified course that um, we worked on. I'll do a demo and share my screen and walk you through the steps and tools that I use to create some of the visual design elements for the course. And we'll also hear from Laura about her experience, Laura and Sarah about their experience teaching the course and some feedback from the students. So some of the obje objectives for the presentation would be to recognize the benefits of course gamification in relation to student engagement and user experience identify some tools and resources that can be utilized to add gamification elements to your Canvas course pages, or um, even if you're using D2L or Blackboard, um, you can use some of these tools as well. And to discuss some ways to implement <coughs> strategies in your own courses. So we just wanted to start off and talk about the course that we worked on. Um, it's I Idea 110, Designing Your University Life. The course description is application of practical design thinking tools, ideas, and decision-making strategies to construct an individualized approach to finding and designing academic and practical experiences. The topics include the purpose of college, strategies for educational wayfinding, and the integration of work and worldview. So it's kind of like um, the students are planning out their futures, thinking about their college experience, and um, kind of putting that together and um, creating a plan for themselves. So a little bit about the background, um, Laura, Sarah, and I were paired together to develop an online course together. 
Um, in our concept meeting, Laura told me that she wanted to gamify our course. So we started discussing the nature of the course, you know, that it's an introductory course into the program. A lot of the students taking it would be freshmen, maybe even some high school students. So it kind of seemed like that gamification was um, a good approach to this because we had a good audience for that. Uh, younger audience seemed to, to make more sense for the gamification idea that we have. So then um, Laura explained her goals and her vision. Basically, the students are mapping out their university life, developing personal goals and developing an understanding about what their journey would be like throughout college and after graduation. So with that preface, Laura then shared with me this drawing that she did of a map that had 16 points, which aligned with the 16 modules or 16 weeks of the course, um, each with specific titles, um, which we called quests. And I felt that this was a really extremely helpful drawing in kind of just getting the foundational um, ideas out there. And, you know, getting a sense of what, what this would look like. And I, I really think that it was helpful that she drew this out. And I think if you are going to approach your class and gamifying your class, you don't just have to jump into the technology. I think this is a really good example of how just drawing out your ideas can be really useful. So I found this personally helpful um, in designing the course. So after seeing this um, and hearing a little bit about Laura's ideas, uh, specifically the hero's journey, um, we determined that this would have kind of like a superhero theme and we wanted to make this, uh, this map that she created into a game board for her homepage. So after taking a look at that, um, I kind of did a little bit of design work and this is what we came up with for the homepage. So um, the, the course is called Design Your University Life, but we've kind of nicknamed it Design You, The Hero's Journey, and we made this game board for the homepage made sure all of the module information included um, that it was a quest. So we used naming conventions that were similar for, um, you know, this gamified style. So instead of saying module, we used quest. Um, so things like that. And then we used the superhero theme on the homepage and then throughout the course. So it started to take a little bit of life through that. Um, <clears throat> throughout the course, Laura also had some unique assignments that were really helpful for the students. Um, we had a graphic design student, Justin English, who designed some templated slides that the students were able to work from. Um, and I have a couple of examples here. I think Laura, if you wanted to talk to that. Yeah, so I can talk also a little bit about, a little bit more about kind of the, the idea behind this hero's journey theme to the course. So. Um, in this course, as you can probably gather from some of these assignments, the students are really doing a deep dive into kind of their, their background, their belief systems, their prior life experiences, and how those are shaping the way that they're thinking about their life journey. And uh, because of this, they're sometimes sharing things that are kind of deeply personal. And so we, we really emphasize an empathy-centered approach, and it seemed like the the idea of this being a hero's journey where the students are going to have you know ups and downs and challenges and trials and and um and and wonderful achievements along the way might help instill some of those design thinking mindsets like creative comments and uh, the ability to be more comfortable taking risks and learning from failure and managing ambiguity because life is incredibly ambiguous right and also uh, the ability to reframe problems as opportunities. So you can see one of the examples here, find your, find your kryptonite is about um, having students kind of identify their dysfunctional beliefs that keep them, uh, that kind of trip them up and then how they can think about that as their kryptonite and what they might be able to do to sort of, um, you know, sort of solve for that kryptonite. In other words, how to reframe those dysfunctional beliefs. So uh, we found that this was a really nice sort of metaphor to use uh, for students along the way. And then, uh, Brianna, if you want to go to the next slide. Yep. So in this slide, you can see we had uh, our graphic designer create these, these slides for all of the main uh, quests, which are really modules along the way. So we call our modules quests. 
Um, and the goal is that students will be sort of building their life story. So they'll end up at the, at the end with a slide deck. And along with that slide deck, we're gonna have them do a video. We haven't quite finished our first, but we're in the middle of our first offering of this course. So they're gonna do a video kind of describing their, their journey at the end of the class. And so we wanted to make sure that students weren't tripped up around being able to be good designers necessarily of these slides. So we created these templates, but then we also gave students the opportunity to edit those templates. And so some of them on the left, you'll see that was the template that our graphic design student created and this didn't really edit it. And then on the right, the, the student decided to make some changes and some of them really even included hand drawings and all kinds of things uh, with their, with their uh, life graph. Um, the other thing that we had students do was um, if they wanted to, they could create their superhero name. And so we have Maker Man on the right. And so uh, uh, probably about 60% of the students embrace that. But with everything with the gamification, we really gave students a lot of options in terms of how far they wanted to get into the sort of the role play of the hero's journey. So some are really into it and some are marginally into it. Um, and that's all fine. It still seems to work really well uh, with the course. And then next slide, Sienna. So a couple of other things that we've integrated uh, into the course. So we've used um, as sort of a, a conceptual framework for the class, um, the Ikigai framework, which comes from positive psychology that really looks at um, the life journey from these, these four perspectives, um, what you're good at, what you love to do, what the world needs and how you can be paid for it. And so the how you can be paid for it piece, I think is a little bit unique for these kinds of classes. And it's been hugely popular with the students. And in fact, the idea for this, this, this approach came out of a design thinking activity that we did in another class before we even developed this class. And so I'm co-teaching the class this semester uh, with Brad Sparks, and he has done these very interactive sort of financial, I guess I would call them financial planning, but financial uh, knowledge kinds of, of um, demonstrations and interactive activities for the students and that really are kind of woven into the different, the different modules. So this is perhaps a little bit of a unique aspect to the course. And then Sarah is going to speak about another interesting aspect of the course, which is our life journey video. Thanks, Laura. So we recognize that whether it's me or Laura or Brad teaching to the students that because this is an indiv individualized opportunity for the students to explore what their life journey might be, that we only have our singular perspective, our life journey, and that it might not be reflective for the students better to say, might not see themselves in us. And so we wanted to, looking at the map that Laura had drawn previously, we wanted to find people that we felt might have a story to tell that fit that module. So what we did was we looked around, considered, we tried to stick all local. We wanted this idea that like, if you were on CSU's campus and you were walking around, maybe you would see that person, this idea that like, oh, they are real. Um, so we tried to stick with all local. We tried to find people that had ties to CSU, whether it's like a donor, an instructor, professor, staff, recent graduate, alumni, so on and so forth. And we reached out to them and I reached out to them and I said, hey, we'd really like you to record these individualized stories. And what I did was we gave them two general questions and one specific question. The general questions, simple, tell us your career journey and then reflecting back, did you always know what you wanted to do or did it change? And if it changed, how did it change? And then the third question that we asked them was specialized to the module that they were going to be placed in. So for example, uh, how might something perceived as a disability be reframed as a strength or a superpower? How has your career shaped your perception of what you think the world needs? And again, these are nodding back to the Ikigai framework that Laura introduced in the previous slide. Another example, um, how have you turned your hobby into something that you can make money on? Uh, how has pressure from external forces family, friends, so on and so forth, shaped what you wanna do with your career. And we recorded these videos, we gave the people an, any option. So they could have one-on-ones with me, conversation, video, Skype like this, or they could just do it on their own. 
and they were anywhere between three and five minutes in length. And then we uploaded those as options for the students to look through and see like, oh, look, it's not all a straight path. Like people endure struggles as well and they've all survived it. They've all found success in their own definition. And it's been really exciting. We, we tried to seek diversity in a lot of different ways, obviously in the way that we look, but also in, in interdisciplinary or in uh, industry di diversity. So anywhere from education to graphic design, to Department of Defense, to forestry and rangeland stewardship. Um, yeah, so it's been a, a real fun opportunity to share other people's stories. Laura, did you have anything else to share about those? No, I think that I think that's great, Sarah. I mean, as an example, maybe we can say that we have the students do um, a career genealogy where they think about they map instead of doing like a typical sort of family tree, they map it out based on the careers or multiple careers that people have had, which we found was a really powerful activity with students because some students realized that their life path that they were on was very strongly influenced by all the careers of the people that had come before them in their family. And so uh, Sarah had a wonderful example of someone who came from a, a, a military family uh, who did a life journey from us and talked about how that was kind of the expectation in his life. Um, and, and that's the, the path that he's on and he's happy with that path. And then we'd have another interview with someone that sort of changed, pivoted from the path that maybe was the expectation in their family. So it was a great way again, for students to kind of stop and reflect, which is something that we heard that um, they don't often finally have the opportunity to do. And they really appreciated have that opportunity to really reflect on prior experiences and family experiences in the course. Yeah, and even to add on to that, Laura, we even had one video where the person, we debated on whether this was the story that we should tell, but we ultimately decided to go with it, where the person decided to actually drop out of college, right? Like they went to college, they thought that they knew what they wanted to do. They started to explore those studies and found that they needed to take a minute and slow down. And so uh, their journey of making that really hard decision and then ultimately how pursuing an education and ultimately a PhD was what was best for them. And so we explore a lot of different stories and not all of them I think are expected. So it's been a really, it's been a fun thing and it was great getting to know all these people in all those different ways as well. Yeah, I also, I think going off of that too, um, tying in the superhero um, gamification theme, was probably helpful for the students because they were able to look at things in more of a, like a different perspective rather than just like their standard way of looking at things. You know, they got to put themselves in like the superhero shoes and, and kind of think about these challenges in a different way. So it was helpful for them to approach this kind of mapping of their life and analyzing of their life in just a different perspective. So. Yeah. Okay. So um, the next thing we'll do is just a Canvas walkthrough. So we'll just talk about some of the things that, um, you know, made the course gamified. So just taking a look here, I'll zoom out a little bit. So this is the Canvas course. Um, you already saw a preview of that. Um, each of these blocks are, um, the, this makes up the game board, but each of these, the game board pieces are clickable. So that will take you to whichever module that you're working on. So for example, if I click to go to quest number four, it will take me to quest four's page. Um, I designed the, the homepage banner and the each module banner, uh, sorry, the homepage game board and the module banners so that they matched and aligned so the design was cohesive throughout the course. Um, we did a little bit of stylization of the pages and added a progress bar at the bottom so that it kind of mimicked a game where you could track your progress as you go through each module. Some of these things I did with City Labs design tools and I'm just going to kind of highlight that now because if you've never used City Labs design tools, it's amazing. So um, I'll just go ahead and edit this page and show you kind of some of the features of City Labs. So um, in the top right hand corner, this icon appears to launch the design tools. And within here, there's a lot of different options. So you can um, choose different themes. If you hover over some of these boxes, I think this is the one that I chose. So you have different colored sections. 
there's just a lot of different options here for pre-made templates. Obviously, I added this. Um, they, did, they didn't design this for me, but so you'd have to create a banner and put that in. But it's a really good starting place to creating different stylized blocks of content. And I was also able to add the progress bar in through that. So um, I don't know. Let's see. I'm in with my admin account. I don't think I have access to that, but I was able to add an, a progress bar in through City Labs design tools. Um, so I just wanted to mention that because I've worked at other institutions where, where we didn't have this and it made it a heck of a lot easier to design these pages using City Labs. So just wanted to throw that out there. If you're an institution who doesn't have that, I highly recommend it. Um, so we'll just click save, I'll just, so basically that's kind of a lot of what we did um, design wise. And then I'm not sure, Laura, if you wanna talk about maybe the assignments and the points and how that was, that worked. Yeah, I'd be happy to. So, you know, um, as, as Brianna alluded to, this was kind of our second class that we started to gamify. This one we gamified much more than, than the other one, which I think we'll talk about a little bit at the end that was a graduate class. And in that class, we talked about them accruing points. And with this class, I really didn't want them to start with zero points and then be kind of a competition for points earned because it seemed contrary to what we were trying to, to have them embrace in terms of their mindsets. And so um, I basically had everyone start with, I, I kind of took the philosophy of sort of like life points or, you know, how you can kind of in, in games, you can kind of fill up your life meter or whatever it is. So everyone starts with a hundred points. So everyone started with a hundred percent and an A in the class. And then it was up to them to sort of keep their life meter full <laughs> for their trials. So they, they basically uh, could lose points as opposed to they were starting from zero and gaining points. I haven't quite figured out the best way to do that. I did it just sort of through like my own participation and manually kind of kind of doing that this first round, but I'm, I'm hoping to maybe explore some other ways to think about how to have more of a visual um, representation for the students on kind of these, these sort of life points. Um, but that's how we approach points in this game, or this, the gamification of this course, I should say. I see some questions in the chat. So there's a question about accessibility. So um, so with the banner like this, um, this homepage banner and each of these blocks that are that make up the game board, you can add alt text to them. So they're just images. And then, um, and I'll get to that. I'll show you a little bit about how I set this up. So um, yeah, you can add, alt text to them. So they're essentially a button. And like I said, I'll show you how to do that. And there was another question. Um, oh, how do you make the links clickable? I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. And then I do not have pricing on City Labs at the moment. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so um, let's jump back to the presentation here. So I think I can answer some of these questions in a little bit um, in, an, in their second demo. So um, yeah, jumping in, how did, how did we kind of, how did I create these? How did I make the game board, the banners? Um, so some tools that I used personally, I used um, free pick for free gra um, vector graphic elements and I used Adobe Illustrator and City Labs, which I showed you. But if you don't have these tools, I'll be demoing how to do the same thing in PowerPoint. I also recommend Canva. Um, because it's a free online tool that uh, is pretty easy to use. And then um, I would say if you do not have uh, City Labs yet, just maybe perhaps utilize some of the uh, page editor features a little bit more than you already are, you know? So just kind of trying to stylize the page as best as you can, just to give it a little bit more character. Um, and now we'll do our second demo. Um, so I'll briefly cover Illustrator because I feel like if you're comfortable with Illustrator, it may be more intuitive. And then I'll do a little bit more on um, PowerPoint since I think most people probably have more experience with PowerPoint. So, um, so if you're using Illustrator, what you'd wanna do is create a new document. Um, you would want to 
create 16 artboards because in our, as you see in the homepage, it's a four by four grid. So you're going to need 16 individual pieces to create the game board. Um, typically a canvas page, not to be confused with like a web page, but the canvas page width is about 780 pixels. So divide that by four, that gives you 195 pixels for the width. And then the height is up to you, however tall or, or short you want your boxes to be. I just chose 125 for this example. And then you'd want to create 16 artboards. So in um, Illustrator, I'll click File New. I have 195 by 125, and then I created 16 artboards. And I'll click Create, and you can see all of the artboards here. However, they're not together. Uh, so if you wanted a cohesive design like the one that I have here, um, so like, for example, if I select all of these items, I'm just going to delete them. So you can see the grid here. I think I deleted one of the boxes, but you can see that this grid is taking shape. And um, because all of the items are together, you can kind of create a cohesive design. So what you'll want to do in your Illustrator document is click this document setup icon or button, click the edit artboards button, and then select rearrange all. So there's a couple buttons you need to click before you get to this. And then you want to make the spacing zero. And then all of your artboards will be essentially touching and you can create a cohesive design. Um, yes, I'm seeing uh, some chat about the percentages for the width. And, and yes, I am going to get that uh, get to that point, yes. Um, okay, so now you have your Illustrator file set up and you wanna start designing it. So I personally like to use FreePick, which is a free vector download site. Um, you, I mean, it's amazing. There are a ton of free graphics. You just have to give a little bit of credit to FreePick um, somewhere in your Canvas course. So say for example, you have a chemistry class. I just have this one pulled up automatically. Um, just ready to go. So say I wanted to use this design, I would just simply click on it, download that, click the free download, and it will give you a, um, a code to copy. So you can copy that and, you know, maybe start a Word doc with all of the attributions that you have that you could link somewhere in your Canvas course. Um, but then otherwise, you would open the zip file that downloads. And then you would open up so there, it's either going to give you an Illustrator file or an EPS file, which opens an Illustrator. So I'll just open that. And then um, wh what you could do is just copy and paste from here. Uh, one thing that's helpful to know about free pick files is that, say, for example, I wanted to change the colors of this graphic so that it matched the branding. Um, that your institution has. If you select the image or graphic, you would right click and click ungroup. And you may have to click ungroup a number of times to ungroup specific elements so you can click on different pieces. But if you did wanna do that, just don't forget that you have to ungroup the pieces maybe multiple times. But say you're ready to go and this is what you, you're ready with these graphics. I'm just going to select one I'm going to select actually this since it's all together. I'll copy it and then I can begin pasting it into my game board and um, using some of these graphics to just start designing things. You could even um, add a text box with, you know, quest one and move that over if I can grab it. Here we go. And then you would start designing your pieces. I'm not gonna design them all. It does take a little bit of time. You know, that's maybe the one challenge here is this, the design can be a little bit time consuming, but worth it in the end. Um, so once you are all ready and you're ready to export your each individual piece, you would go to file, export, export as, and then choose the file where you wanna save it. And you could either select PNG or a JPEG. And then you would want to select this use artboards button and select all and then export. And each individual artboard would export and you would use those as the individual pieces in your game board. 
Okay, so say that you don't have Illustrator or you're just not that comfortable with it. Um, I'll show you how to set up this in PowerPoint. So here's an example of a grid that's made in PowerPoint. What I did was I basically created, here I'll show you in our the slides. So I have like these overviews. Um, and, and in the slide deck, which I will share, I did provide an overview of the steps that I did. So if you don't have to memorize these steps, they're, they're all right there for your reference. Um, so in PowerPoint, you would want to open just a normal PowerPoint slide, select the design tab, and then select slide size and custom slide size. And then for this example, I did 16 by eight. So basically you're wanting to make something that's divisible by four. So you have the four by four grid. So I'll go into PowerPoint, oops. And so I got to that by going to design, slide size, and then custom slide size. And then I put the width and height in here. And then what I did is I created boxes. So uh, two by four boxes, and I copied and pasted them into this grid. So now I have individual game pieces. And what I started to do was I added some elements. So if I go to the insert tab, I would say, you know, again, you could use free pick if you want to download graphics from there, you could go online and find icons or graphics. But there's also some icons in um, PowerPoint already there. So you can use any of these elements. I think that's where I grabbed the clock. There's stickers, which are a little bit more fun to use. There's illustrations. Um, so say you wanted to use this one, you could just pop that one right in there um, and scale it to fit your box. So once you're done with that, um, obviously these are not individual pieces. So what you would wanna do is create a second PowerPoint. And the, the second PowerPoint, which I already have set up here, is going to have 16 slides, and that would be one for each of your game pieces. And they're going to be the two by four size. So again, you're going to adjust the slide size to the uh, width four and height two, obviously making that grid. And then you're just going to simply copy and paste the items. Actually, I'm going to delete the box. Um, a helpful, so I created these boxes with um, an outline so I could see the outline of the box, but you don't really may or may not want that um, in your actual design. So you could delete that. I'm just going to delete the box for the sake of this. Oh, actually, I grouped this. Um, well, that's okay. I'll just keep it. Okay. So I'm copying this, pasting it into um, the slide one. And then I would do the same for the rest of the slides. And then when you're ready with that, you would go to File, Export, and then you would select Change File Type. And then you could save as a JPEG. And then you would save all of those as individual pieces and in the folder of your choice. So then you would have 16 individual pieces that you're ready to use in Canvas. Does anyone have any questions about that before I move on? I know that's a lot. Okay, so hopefully um, once you get to do that, um, like I said, you don't have to memorize everything. You can reference this, this PowerPoint, but um, let me know if you have any questions along the way. Okay, awesome, thanks. Okay, so um, here we go. So once you have the JPEGs, you're ready to add them to your Canvas page. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to create links from the images, and I'll show you how to do that. I'll just kind of use um, Laura's page as an example. So I'm going to click edit. And see here, I'm going to make this bigger. So each of these, this is inserted as an image. So this is just an image. If I select image options, it gives you the option to write um, alt text, which I guess we should have done for this one, but I, um, either way, so that's that covers the accessibility aspect of this. Um, so then when it comes to adding in your 
your game pieces. Obviously, you're just going to, uh, I'll add one here at the end. Let's see. So you would go to, so I'm, my cursor is at the bottom of this game board. I would go to the add image button. I'd select upload image. And then I pull the image from my computer or desktop, wherever I have it saved. You can immediately add your alt text in here. So for example, if I pulled in the quest one button, I would write quest, quest one button um, and give a brief description of it. So that covers the accessibility issue. Um, text inside the image. Um, yeah, so yeah, I, I see the question about alt text. Um, I would say, yeah, you could uh, say quest one, you are here button or, um, you know, and provide maybe a little brief description of what that looks like. Um, I guess it would be really up to you about how much you want to describe the, the buttons in the alt text, but um, yeah. I would at least give it an indication that it's, it's a button and it goes to quest one. Um, yeah, so, okay. So one thing to notice is if I scale this um, image a bit, let me just make it a little bit bigger. It does seem like it saves. I'm going to save it here on this page. And it looks like it's the right width. And I hope this example works. Oh, yep, here we go. And everybody can see my Harry Potter background, so. Um, let's see the zoom window. Okay, there we go. So you'll notice that the, because the width and height wasn't um, using a percentage, I think someone in the chat mentioned a percentage. So this is just whatever width and height the image was. Um, and so if I'm scaling the page, this is kind of getting kicked off and pushed to the side, which you obviously don't want. You want this to scale with Hit, uh, students different screen sizes um, and you know the way they have their screen scrunched and things like that. So you would want to adjust a little bit of the coding. And so I'll go back into edit mode and I'm going to do that with not only the banner, which I've adjusted, um, but also game piece one. Um, another thing to note is that when you put the image in to your page, it doesn't automatically give you a width and height. So you actually have to scale it using your cursor a little bit first in order to have the width and height show up in your code. So I've done that for this banner and for quest one. And um, before I jump into the code, I also wanna make this quest one um, a button. So if I select the image, I'm gonna remove the link. So I select the image, it's just an image right now. I'm going to go to the link and I'm going to click course link and then pages, um, I'll expand the pages and I'm going to click uh, quest one. Um, and so that makes this a link that is active. So basically this is working like a button. Okay, and now this is a little bit of a tricky part but I promise even though it's coding, it's not as hard as it seems. Um, so I'm just going to go into the HTML editor and I'm going to start looking for the pieces that I um, am, have adjusted. So if I'm looking for the banner, let's see, even I have to read a little bit. Okay, so it's helpful if you do put the alt text in. Um, I should have changed this to something. Uh, this isn't technically alt text, so sorry about that, but I made it a little easier for me to find. And here I see that the width and height are determined. So what I wanna do is delete the width. I, or, well, I wanna to totally delete the height. And for the width, I'm just going to put 100% because that banner is scaling 100% of the page. Um, and then for each of the pieces below, the game board pieces, those are, there's four of them spanning across, so 25%. So 100 divided by four, 25. So I'm going to find, here's my game board piece and um, changing this to 25%. So now when I click save, and I scale the page, everything is scaling with the width of the page. So that prevents, um, you know, each of your game pieces from falling down to, you know, the next line or it accommodates for different screen sizes, which is nice. So 
that's how you do that. Um, any questions about that? Yeah, so um, design-wise, that's basically how um, I set up the, the game board homepage. Um, I did the same 100% with, with the, um, the banners for each of the module pages so that those scale. And then, like I said, um, in City Labs Design Tools, I used some of those features to design the pages. So that's basically how we came up with this cohesive design. Um, and yeah, hopefully that gives you a good starting place to create a homepage banner, um, homepage game board, and some custom design pages yourself. Um, and again, if you have any questions, uh, I, I tried to put as many details I could uh, in these slides. So if you reference those, hopefully that's that should be pretty helpful. And I did put the the slide deck in. Um, in the the chat here in the presenter slides it's right here okay um so so we really during the development of the course we were really thinking about user experience um you know how the students would be approaching the work how they would how they were their mindsets would be as they are completing the work so user experience was a huge part of this and of course um you know, if you don't know what user experience is, it refers to the overall experience of a person using a product such as a website or a computer application. It's especially in terms of how easy or pleasing it is to use. Um, so we really wanted to see what the students thought of it. So we came up with a little survey to gather their experiences um, and we <clears throat> embedded that in the Canvas page and just asked them to quickly fill out a couple of questions so we could get their feedback. So um, the first question, I'll share a couple of the questions. Um, the course, uh, the first question is the course has a gamified theme. Did you find this style and approach the course to be more or less engaging than other online courses you've taken? We only had nine responses to the survey. I think everybody knows how hard it is for students to complete a survey, but um, you know, we had not so, um, nine responses. So um, and most of the students said that it was more engaging uh, than less. Uh, of course, we had a couple saying that it was less engaging, but there were, again, some students who chose to really dive into the theme of the course and, you know, kind of take on their superhero uh, personas and things like that. So some people did, I think Laura can attest to that, um, take advantage of the gamification more than others. Another question was, how did the gamified theme of the course change your approach to the coursework? Just a couple sample responses from the students. Someone said it made things feel more fun and anxiety and exciting. Another person said it's very fun to be a superhero and to have this self-discovery class be about how we are all superheroes in our own way. And then another student said this theme of the theme of this course definitely changed my perspective on this outcome of the class. I enjoy the classwork. So um, it was just it was good to know that it made a difference for some of these students and they really seemed to enjoy it. And I think even aside from the feedback that we got in the survey, before we even had sent out the survey, Laura had been mentioning to me that students seemed to enjoy the course and um, you know, we're we're more engaged with the content because of the gamified theme, which was awesome. Another question was, how likely are you to take a course again that approaches the learning in a gamified style? Um, yeah, a lot of people were saying that they would, seven people said they would. And then even though others were saying, you know, maybe it was less engaging, it seemed like more people said they would take a course like this again, which was nice. And that was some good positive feedback. And then I think kind of the last thing that we wanted to share were some challenges and maybe upcoming changes that we were thinking of. Again, this was the first go around that we had creating this gamified course. So definitely some things that we learned along the way. Um, I can let Laura speak to these. Yeah. Sure, I'd be happy to. I'm actually gonna speak to the second bullet point first because I think it, it explains a little bit some of the feedback that we got on the course. So this, as I mentioned, this is our first offering of the course and I'm teaching it simultaneously an online section and a face-to-face -face section. 
And uh, what we found, which was somewhat interesting, but perhaps not surprising, is we really have, the, the, the course was designed for really sort of the freshman student as the main audience, and we are going to be offering it as dual enrollment for high school students. However, in this first offering of the class, we have a lot of students that are graduating this semester, and some also that are non-traditional students and are in their 30s and 40s. And I think that for some of our non-traditional students are the ones that we got some of the feedback um, about it feeling like a freshman course, which of course is what we designed it for. So I think that was maybe where we got some of the, um, some of the folks that are a little less engaged tend to be of a little different demographic than what or was our intention to design the course. So it's something that we'll kind of keep an eye on and see how the course evolves. And if we continue to have a real mixture, we may think about providing you know, more options for students so that we can help them feel engaged in, in uh, the way that they would best enjoy that. Um, just some uh, unusual semester this semester, we seem to have our, our face-to-face class met once a week on Wednesdays and we seem to have a snow day. Like every Wednesday, practically, uh, we had two actually, but we had a, we had a, <laughs> we had a storm every Wednesday, um, which was really ironic. And uh, our new protocol on campus is if there's a snow day, it's a snow day for everybody, including online sections. And also because we were teach, I'm teaching both sections, I wanted to try to keep them in sync. Um, and so it, it was a little bit more challenging with the game board design on the homepage to have as much flexibility as I'm used to in my Canvas courses. So I typically don't release modules ahead of time. And so on the, on the backside, I could easily be rearranging things. It was a little harder to do, although I ended up just basically keeping all the modules and just moving some content around to adjust for the, the you know, basically the reduction from 16 weeks down to 14 weeks. And so there were a couple of weeks where I said we were covering two modules or two quests. Um, and then, um, we ta I talked a little bit about the, the, the grades and somebody said, well, maybe this is really health points and not life points. And that's, that's probably more accurate. I didn't speak specifically to kind of the points with the students. I just kind of said, everyone's starting at 100% and it's up to you to keep that going. But it's something that I'd like to explore a little bit more in the future and try to come up with maybe a more creative way of thinking about how points might play a role in the gamification of this course. And then um, the last point is um, I had mentioned previously that, I, that it kind of Rihanna and my first foray into gamification was with a graduate class. And we, we did this and we, we used some, this is where we introduced the progress bars, which I really liked. Um, although interestingly, I found that the undergraduate students prefer the progress bars more than the graduate students. And I'm not sure why that is. Um, and then another aspect that we incorporated into the graduate course was this digital badging where in the discussion post, they had a, a badge that re represented a certain design thinking mindset or design thinking skill. And the students were required to sort of assign that badge to, to appear based on how they responded in the discussion post. And then the student would also have to put some rationale onto why they were assigning that badge. And I found this actually was a really simple way to kind of gamify the discussion post that was really powerful. The, the quality of the discussions went up exponentially. Um, so the feedback was not the usual kind of superficial feedback that I was often struggling with where, you know, kind of good job. <laughs> so they were getting in up to a lot meatier uh, discussions and conversations around what people were posting and why and giving more crit critical feedback. So. I think that um, I'm planning in the next iteration of the Design U class to incorporate a similar kind of badging in the discussion post, which I thought was really helpful. So I think that's kind of where we are. We're still obviously not through the class, so I'm, I'm sure we'll learn a few more things along the way. But it's been really, it has been really wonderful working with Brianna, and the graphics of the class I think are really exciting, and the enthusiasm of the students has been really high for the course. So I do think that the gamification has really come into play in creating that really positive culture in the class. Yeah, I'm just gonna also give a shout out to Laura and Sarah for coming to me with this idea. Um, it was so creative and it was really fun to work, work on this course. Um, it was definitely uh, clearly unique. And I think, you know, even, 
some of these gamification ideas like help motivate the students, especially with the badging. Um, you know, the experience Laura had with the graduate class with the badging is something that now she is saying, oh, okay, well, maybe we can incorporate this into this undergrad class. Um, and so with that said, I just feel like it's really important just to start somewhere um, and don't, you know, you don't have to do it all. Um, and, you know, even starting with that drawing and coming up with an idea of maybe, you know, brainstorm what you want to do, just starting small and then and realizing, okay, like this is, this was our first stab at it, and it may be your first stab at it, but you learn things along the way, and um, it just, you know, it everything just continues to improve. So, um, yeah, I hope that everyone has learned a lot about our experiences, and hopefully that gives you a little bit of a head start there. Um, and yeah, I guess, Sarah, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I just want to say thank you to you, uh, Brianna, for helping us bring these ideas to life. I think one of the things that COVID presented was when we shifted online for a while and found that that was going to probably be a small permanent portion of the classes that we teach. Um, the challenge that Laura and I continually ran into is how do you teach design thinking in a way that's online that's still engaging? And I think you've really helped to bring those ideas to life for us. So thank you. <laughs> Well, thanks. <laughs> well, yeah. it was really fun. Um, do you guys have any questions? I think that was that basically wrapped it up. We're a little early, so we have time. I think that you're able to come off mute too if you have questions, but obviously if you want to put them in the chat, that's fine too. Thanks for the feedback, guys. That was awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, well, thanks. And um, yeah, the the document is in the the chat. So feel free to take a look at that. And good luck. Oh, I see someone's redoing their classes. Nice. <laughs> good luck gamifying. <laughs> well, thank thank you to each of you to each of you today, and you had just an incredible crowd. I think we all had almost a hundred folks at one point, so a much needed topic. Elk wants to hear from each of you about the experience, so take a look at chat. I've dropped in the session evaluation link, um, so just take a few minutes if you wouldn't mind and, and fill that out because I know that they would love to have your feedback about what you heard today. And again, just thank you, Brianna, Sarah, Laura, so much. We, we learned so much from you today. Have a great rest of the conference. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you very much.